cool, cool. So thanks, Lord, for coming to the Meridian uh, speaker conversation, sitting down through your conversation. We really appreciate it. How you doing, man? I'm doing well. How's how's everybody doing? Well, I know just y'all too, but <laughs> hope you guys are yeah, well. I'm doing good. Today. Good. How about you, Nicole? I'm all right. Hang in there. Cool, cool. Yeah, well, just ask a little bit about yourself, like how you got started um, with NBC, and you know, let's just go from there. All right, cool. It's a, it's a little, um, not a straight way path. There were some bumps. Well, just a little about myself. Obviously, my name is Lord Richards Jr. Um, I'm not from the city. I'm from Westchester County. Um, I, I grew up there most of my life. Um, I went to Alexander Hamilton. It's in Elmsford. It's a really small school. Um, I did soccer for a little bit, but obviously I ran track. That was my main sport. Um, I ran track for 11, 12 years. Um, so most, so almost basically half my life. I'm only 25. Um, ran track in high school. That was my main sport that I did. Um, and I also ran at Lehman, which I will tell you guys later. Um, I went to Westchester uh, Community College. I majored in liberal arts and social science. I wanted to be a math teacher at first, but that switched. When I came to, to Lehman, I transferred over to Lehman in fall of 2016 graduated in January of 2020, got my bachelor's in political science, and I'm trying to get my uh, JD in sports law and, and um, sports and entertainment law. Um, so with that being said, I, I have been balancing uh, politics and, and sports. You know, I've served on multiple campaigns, was a social media ambassador for one campaign, was a field director for one, and interning here, intern for you know, my city mayor, um, I'm on the police reform committee. So I'm doing uh, different stuff in terms of the, the uh, politics realm. Uh, with sports, obviously I know my sports. Um, like I said, I ran track uh, half my life basically. And how I got the NBC gig, it was actually my sister-in-law. My sister-in-law uh, worked for NBC Sports um, mm -hmm. and she, worked for ESPN and, and now she, she currently works for Turner Sports in Atlanta. So she covers the NBA. Um, so sometimes in life, it's not what you know, but who you know, unfortunately, but right. you still have to learn how to market yourself, still talk you know, to different people. Um, so, you know, last year, you know, she was like, hey, you know, NBC is looking for more diversity, more inclusion. Do you want to cover the Olympics? I was like, of course, like, no doubt. Um, so she mentored me and coached me, helped me with my resume, which I also recommend you guys doing. If you have, I, I know Lehman has like a Lehman careers where they, they can help you with your resume and, mm -hmm. and that of that sort. Um, you know, she, you know, she mentored me, even though I knew about the Olympics and I was in track is like, like the main highlight, um, NBC covers four main sports in the, in the, in the Olympics and it's beach volleyball, track and field. Uh, gymnastics and swimming. So those are the four. Um, and obviously, I know my track and field, but I had to learn about other uh, uh, other sports during or even before the interview. Um, you know, so I had to study my little game a bit. But you know, it it, it, it took a while. But obviously, I got the job. And while working for the NBC Sports for the Tokyo Olympics. They hired me for the Paralympics also while I was, I was doing there. So I was there from July until September. Mm -hmm. um, I was located in Stanford, Connecticut. That's the headquarters. Some people was at Tokyo. Um, Tokyo is roughly 13 hours ahead, I believe. So I got hired as a production assistant. You know, I have a, I have a, I have a poli sci degree, but I want to do sports law. So, you know, they taught me how to do segment highlights, which they, there's this program called Ovid. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of it, but it's an editing program that they software. use. Yeah, yeah. A software, there's OBS content. So anything that was getting like live feed, I, I would get it raw. And when you guys would go to commercial, I, I would still see the raw feed. So my job until a little bit of, of everything, I would, and my other colleagues would have to watch this big monitor of, of like five, six to different screens. You know, we'll watch multiple games at a time and we had to, you know, make sure everything was recording into airspeed. Airspeed is basically making sure that it's being recorded to that to that appropriate sport. 
you know, we and we had ma'am, which is the which is the programmer, mm -hmm. and I had to make sure that everything was being recorded. Sometimes uh, certain, certain, there were certain spots that was that was in the wrong spots, and certain sports that wasn't being recorded. So we had to be the eyes and ears. And where I was located was called Central Tape. Now Central Tape is like ninety percent of like the like the Olympics. We we get all the recordings. So when it's live in Tokyo, it will be like six in the morning. But for you guys, prime time, it was already recorded. So I already knew what was going to happen. So we were just sending you guys like the re recorded feed. Towards the end of the NBC Sports, you know, I asked my producer and director if I could cover track and field because that's my forte. Um, yeah. I was fortunate enough to cover track and field. I did se I did uh, segment highlights. So 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 what that is basically is as an AD, as a, a, a as associate director. I was able to hear the producer or even the announcers and you have to time it right, you know, and I did. So it's like kind of like after a game when you watch Sports Center, and they show you like the highlights, just the just the good fun parts, not, not the whole game. That's what I did. So I would cut segment highlights for track and field for any for, uh, for the last like five days or so. And that was the most in, in, um, intense. So that was my best one. Um, Paralympics, I will tell people this, Paralympics unfortunately isn't like the regular Olympics, so the energy is not the same, um, you know, less employees, but I, but I still was able to, to cover track and field, wheelchair basketball, single volleyball, uh, swimming, and some of these athletes are actually quite extraordinary, you know, they're able to do all these things that I can't even do, and they have one, you know, limbs or not, or even none. Um, so covering Tokyo was an experience I will never forget. Um, and NBC, like, like I said, it's, it's who, you know, not what, you know, sometimes it is what, you know, but during this day and age, unfortunately it's who, you know, and in terms of marketing, the advice that I, I, I would give is put yourself out there. Don't be afraid to try new things. You know, mm -hmm. I have a poli sci degree. I was like, oh my gosh, Brittany, I don't know if I can do this and look what happened. You know, right. there's multiple people that's in the news and media world that has no, they like, they have no degrees that relate to their work. And I met so many people that started off as, you know, as teachers and, or sort of as in the medical field and have connections and they just went into the sports world, you know, but it's really intensive. When I was doing the Paralympics, I did the Olympic channel and the NBC Sports Nation. And I was on prime time from, from, from a seven to 3 PM. So right. it was nonstop, you know, and, but it was fun. I was in the playback room, which is very intense. Um, for the regular Tokyo, we, we, we was on different networks. We was on NBC sports nation, the Olympic channel, Peacock. Um, mm -hmm. I met, uh, I met a carry champion. I don't know if you know her, but she used to be one of the co-hosts for first take with Stephen A. Smith. Um, oh, okay. That's cool. She's, 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 a, she's a really nice young, nice uh, young lady. She's very inspirational. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so we covered uh, USA Today. It was different networks, so it was a great experience. Um, I know you guys do like journalism, so I would say, you know, don't be afraid to try new things. You know, reach out to these companies, um, uh, CBS, NBC, um, what other networks, ABC. You know, um, mm -hmm. even Turner Sports. If you're into sports journalism. You know, get Watch, involved, yeah. uh, build build connections. Don't be afraid to try new things. I, I know it, it seems kind of scary, but that's how you network. You know, I've I've networked with so many people. I have their phone numbers. I have this director, this producer. You know, um, I recently got a job offer to to work for the NBA uh, to cover the Portland Trailblazers, but I I I turned it down, and everybody was like, "Oh my gosh, why?" I was like, "Well, they're not paying much, so you should like." know your worth don't be afraid to say no know your worth you know i'm not gonna go and move across the whole country getting paid this amount of money to cover the pulling trailblazers knowing that they're a multi-million dollar company you know or so and it's, you know just you you know your worth but mm -hmm. i know the producer of the of like who who like produces their games you know and you you get connected with these directors and you know i've met uh some directors that covered the new york knicks at the MSG, you know? So you always build connections. Don't be afraid to, to try new things, you know? And um, this, 
despite me having a pos, you know, a poli sci degree, I don't know, I didn't know anything about journalism, but I knew about my sports. So sometimes it's like who you know instead of what you know. Um, and that's, I mean, that's that's basically it. I mean, um, I would definitely say don't be afraid to, to network. You know, this generation, I know we're so kind of afraid to talk and to network, but always network. Even if it's an internship, like you never know what can, it can get you. I've interned with so many politicians and so many campaigns, you know, it turned out to me networking with other people. You know, even with NBC, I, that's my I, that's the connection through my sister-in-law. You know, she knows that I know sports and, and, and track and field. I'm a coach now, and I'm one of, you know, um, the building managers for the Apex, you know, now. So it's that balance of politics and sports. Um, I also forgot to mention that I have my own podcast. So, you know- I was gonna touch on that. Yeah, that's, that's really cool, man. Yes, I, I I forgot to mention that. So it's my podcast is called Real Talk with Lloyd. And um, you know, it's basically covers anything with social anything that regards to social justice, sports, politics, and anything that's um, you know, involving that's in today's society. So mm-hmm. I have it's on my Facebook, it's called Real Talk with Lloyd, if you guys can follow that. Um, so I incorporate lots of different things. I'm learning still how to edit. You know, I was told by our sports information, uh, Len, who mm-hmm. works in, in, in the Apex. So I'll, I'll be covering more games. I'll be doing the, you know, like the announcements, doing highlights. So, but that's all about like connecting and talking, you know, like some of you guys can be afraid like to step up and say, hey, I want to know if I can do this or, or, or if I can do that. You know, what, 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 what will it take for me to do this and to, and to do that, you know? So um, that was, that's the key thing that I would say on how I was able to be so successful and still learning is to network and don't be afraid to put your name out there. Don't be afraid right. to fail, you know, um, that's how you learn. But the NBC obviously was an experience I'll, I'll never forget. Hopefully they'll call me back. You know, unfortunately I can't do I can't do the Winter Olympics because that's during my track season. So I had right. to deny that, you know, but um, yeah, I mean, that's basically just like the moral of, my, of, the, of the story. Those are the, of the, those are the devices that I learned and will give you guys, you know, don't, don't be afraid to, to uh, try new things. You know, um, don't be afraid to network. Don't be afraid to do internships. There's nothing wrong with internships. Internships make you grow and learn. And yeah, but also I, learn about your background, man. You have a lot of extensive history that I even know about. I didn't know about the the, the Portland Trailblazers job offer. That's very that's very cool, man. You've been able yes, to do I mean, I, I don't <laughs> just a short limited amount of time, you know. Yeah, I, I I don't like to you know brag. I always like to make my success be my noise. I don't like to you know I always try to stay. I want I'm, I'll try to be a humble guy, you know, because mm-hmm. things can be taken away from you. So you know, I was always taught to just to, to just work hard, have good work ethic. Remain humble. Don't be afraid to try new things or or or, or fail. And there's nothing right. wrong with internships. But however, like, like I said earlier, you guys have to learn how to balance like your worth. You know, it was an internship, but it was a paid internship, but it wasn't enough money. And, I, and me moving out there wouldn't be enough. So you should always know like your worth. Always know what you want to do. Um, and and For it's sure. okay not to know, but at least have like an idea. And this is like, I, I, I don't know if you guys are probably still in school, but I graduated and I switched majors. You know, I was a math teacher or I was trying to be a math teacher and I switched it to, you know, to a politics, a whole different 180 switch, you know? So um, that's the advice that I would give. I don't know if you guys have any questions for me or any uh, comments or like concerns. I was gonna ask a few. I actually switched my majors too. I was in computer science before switching over to film to find out my true passions. And like you said, and just going for what you're worth and knowing what you're more passionate about, which is really, really cool, man. You said, you mentioned that your sister-in-law helped you with your resume and helped you like with, um, helped you align your career interest to be more with what NBC was looking for. So you clicked on that, like what she helped you with, like your, with your resume and with your application and stuff like that. Right, so, um... Again, I was blessed. So, you know, she, she submitted it for me. So I didn't have to submit it myself. And most of my colleagues oh, wow. had the same thing. You know, yeah. um, they have people that help them uh, submit it themselves. Cause I didn't know about it until like she, until she told me, you know, cause of COVID it was canceled. Mm-hmm. But 
there's 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 a certain format, I guess I, I'm assuming in, in the film and media and like journalism world on how you guys format your resume. You know, normally like I would have my education on top, and um, she put it at, at, at the bottom. Um, certain things that that, that 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 would give you like the advantage, knowing how to use or or or, or like edit programs like mm -hmm. Ovid. I know there's OBS content, get familiar with that. If you wanna go into the sports world and to, and to edit your own stuff, um, you know, learning different, learning how to use different programs on the computer, like I said, Ovid, or OBS. Um, I minored- Adobe, stuff like that, right? Right, I minored in music, so I, so I knew how to cut and record like, um, like some sound bites, but that's mainly it. Um, Learn, learning how to, you know, and, and it's like there's little things. Sometimes in your resume, you, you may have, you know, like different fonts. Make sure you guys are careful with that. You know, it's the basic stuff, but that will make, it, it will go like a long way. You know, um, make sure the grammar is good. You know, if you're having one format, make sure it's one format for the all. Um, and if you guys are trying to apply for sports, obviously you got to know your sports, you know. You like and you got to be more more versatile. Like like I told you, I, obviously, I, I track and field was my forte. I watch swimming, I watch gymnastics, but I I don't really know in depth where I can have a, like a Stephen A debate with you, you know. So I, I but I know enough to follow the game. So if you guys try to apply for NBC or, or any sports, I would say I would highly advise um, do your research know about the sports, know about the Olympics. Um, I know when I was doing the interview, it, it was a phone interview and she asked me, what is my favorite Olympic moment? So obviously you got to know like your history on the Olympics and your sports. You can't right. just say something randomly, you know, and obviously coming from a Jamaican household and culture, I, I, I had to say Usain Bolt, you know, that, that was my favorite one. You know, yeah, he, exactly. he's the one that really inspired me to, to actually start track, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so those are the advice that I would say. Um, if you're applying for a regular like journalism job, like going to ABC, I never uh, applied to ABC, but I, I only applied just like for for like for, uh, um, for sports stuff. So only if it's sports stuff, obviously you gotta know your sports. Um, you know, I would definitely say that study what you want to know. Don't just go into like a journalism field, whether it's covering politics or sports, not knowing what it is. And internships will help. So if they see they, that you have experience with your internships, that's that's the advantage, you know. So 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 that's the advice that I, I would definitely say. For sure. So uh, what exactly made you stand out during the application process? Like, what what, what did uh, um, the people who looked over your resume or interviewed you said they really that really helped you make a difference during your application process? That helped you stand out more. When I was in the interview, I was talking a, a, a lot about track and field. No, it, it, it was a phone interview, you know, she couldn't, obviously, I don't really know per se what made me stand out because I wasn't okay. in, doing that process. But what, what, what I can tell you is when I was on the phone interview, she was impressed because I knew my history of the Olympics and, and, and the sport. You see, when you're passionate about something, you don't really work. You, like, like it's, not, it's, not, it's not a job. I know there, there's like a saying where if you find what you love, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have to work again in your, in your life, which means that if you find what you really want to do and, and, and you're passionate about it, you don't really see it as a job because it's just like covering sports to me isn't a job. And I'm not, you know, disregarding any like, you know, reporters. But, but what I'm saying is that one director told me that this is not a job to him because he loves what he does. And I will say the same thing like for you guys. So what, so what, what, what made me stand out was me knowing what I know. You gotta know what you're, 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 um, you're, you're talking about. You can't just apply for certain jobs and not know what you're talking about, right? So I wasn't during that application process. So I don't know what, what made me stand out. I can assume it was my track resume because I did add some of my track awards and my championships inside there. So being an athlete probably was, the, was, the, was a definite advantage. My colleagues that worked the, the, the same shift of me, they were, they were athletes too. I know, she, you know, one was a skater, one played basketball, football, so like they know sports, right? 
obviously if, if you're applying for a field, you should know what you're talking about. You should like you, you should have some type of knowledge of that. You know, I wouldn't recommend anybody to apply for embassy sports and they know, and, and they don't know what sports is, you know, like if my my friend, she doesn't watch no sports at all. So I would never I would never tell her or hey, apply to NBC Sports. She had no idea what sports was until I told her, what, you know, this is what a thing is, that, that this is a goal, this is what this is. You know, you have to really study your craft and it's mm-hmm. not trying to be a jerk or anything, but you have to know what you're, you're talking about. So if, if you want to stand out, you have to go the extra mile and know what you're talking about. Right. So what would you say were like transferable skills that you learned from track or from, from your classes that helped you out in NBC? Like any, any skills that... We helped you like transfer over into the, into the workforce. Well, transferring from you mean from being like a coach or just being like or being like a student. Just like your experience in track and both in school, like were there any skills that you picked up on like while you were in school or in track that that helped you out with with your internship of NBC? Yes. Oh, okay. So by the way, it wasn't an internship. It, 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 it was a job. So I, I got oh, full time job. Okay. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so it's fine. So they only hired me just to cover the Olympics. So um, let me see, what, what what I learned? You know, track and field actually taught me work ethic. Track and field actually taught me important life lessons that transferred to NBC. Okay. Um, it made me more, I guess, aware of how hard you have to work to earn what you want. You know, when I first started track, I was just running off my speed, off my talent. But until, and I never won anything. I lost every single race. But the following year, I was like, you know what? I, I, I set goals. I, I, I set standards. I want to win. That same work ethic that I ha- had in track, I used it in school and, and just in life in general. I don't know if you guys watch basketball, but obviously, obviously Kobe Bryant, who passed away, I always loved his work ethic. His work ethic is undeniable. You know, he has that Mamba mentality, what it's called. And, and I, I believe the mantra is being the best version of oneself. And that's all you have to do is just be the best version of yourself. And that's all that we can do. So transferring from what I learned from track, track taught me about life. Track taught me about how to work. It taught me how to be responsible. I know I was a captain in high school and in college. So it, it taught me how to be responsible, how to be a leader how to try new things. Don't be afraid because there were certain events that I didn't want to do. And then I tried it and I, 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 and unfortunately, well, fortunately for me, I was good at it. So you, you never know what you're good at until you try. And I know it sounds so, cl- you know, so like cliche, but there is no secrets. There's no wand, there's no spells. It is just plain hard work ethic and perseverance and consistency. You know, you're going to fail. That's just life. You're going to fail, but you know, my parents always tell me how you respond to your failures determine your, it will determine your success. You know, I failed multiple times. You know, there, there was times where I, I didn't want to go to school. I wanted to, to, to drop out. What if I did drop out? I would, I, I would never get NBC. I would never be a coach. I, 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 I would never get my degree. There's, you know, there's, is, everything happens for a reason, you know? And so for me, to answer your question, um, what made me, so that helped me, even though I, I felt so shy during NBC and I messed up, uh, uh, you know, here and there, you know, they said there is no dumb questions. You know, I, I would ask questions. That I, I would feel so embarrassed. I was like, I, I don't know how, how to do this. I don't know how to edit, but they, they were patient with me. They helped me and learning that work ethic from track helped me with NBC and even in life, trying new things. I had to segment out surfing. Surfing took me like six to seven hours, man, just to watch. It's a boring sport to me. No offense. If you guys do surfing, I don't, I don't know. I don't watch yeah. surfing, but I, I did it. They asked me to do uh, table tennis, uh, softball, um, um, you know, all this different stuff. But I, I did it. So to answer your question, man, work ethic, what transfers from me doing from school and track and the NBC, what helped me? Work ethic, uh, being a leader, and not being afraid to try new things. That's great, that's great, man. Very, 
and definitely prepared you for the workforce and definitely helped you for experience with NBC and helps you out in life as well. It is very, very incredible, very, very powerful. I definitely want to be mindful of your time and don't want to take it too much, but does anybody else have questions before we, um, before we close? Type in the chat if you don't want to dig. Yeah, I know it says there's like nine minutes and 10, and 10 seconds left yeah. of your stuff. So I don't know if Peter has a question or Nicole, any comments or? Uh, yeah, comments, questions. I guess there's no dumb questions, like you said. Right. No, but thank you for um, coming and speaking to us. I really appreciate it. No problem. Peter, anything? With the silence of the yes. Uh, thanks for coming, Lloyd. I really appreciate it. Uh, can you course. send me the video after the, after the meeting? I, really appreciate I will. Recording. Just, yeah, just, just, um, just uh, send me an email through a messenger and then I'll download it and then I'll send it to you. Sure, yeah. All right. Thanks for coming, man. No problem. Thanks again for having me, guys. If you guys have any questions or I can come back and talk again. Yeah, he's on Instagram as well. You can DM him there if you want to give him a yes, um, At Track Prince with two underscores. Um, and then my podcast is called Real Talk with Lloyd. It's on Facebook. So um, if you have any questions, just DM me like what like what uh, Michael said, or you can just um, text him and then I can you know send it to him. All right. See you guys. All right.